Hi everyone, I am Eve Patrice Rojas and today I will be discussing to you the activity for the kinds of tournaments. The first one is the single elimination. Simplicity is the greatest appeal of this tournament. Losers are eliminated and winners advance to the next round until only one contestant remains to become a champion. We can use this kind of elimination when the number of entries is large, time is short, and the number of locations are limited. The advantages of single elimination are it is quickest method to determine a winner and it requires less facilities and its disadvantages are it only provides few opportunities for contestants to play and its maximum emphasis is on winning. And to determine the number of rounds, the total should be the same number as the power to which two must be raised to equal the number of entries. For example, we have 8 and 3 or 8 teams. 2 must be raised 3 times. So 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. That means for 8 entries, there must be 3 rounds. In computing the number of games, we are going to use the formula in single elimination. G is equal to N minus 1. G stands for the number of games, N as the number of entries, and one is given. Let's say we have eight entries. To compute, let's just substitute the given numbers. Eight as the number of entries, then minus one. Therefore, G is equal to eight minus one. Then G is equal to seven. That means there are seven games to be played when we have eight entries. Now, let's elaborate further the single elimination tournament using a diagram. In making the single elimination diagram, I am going to put letter stands as the teams. So team A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Let's say for example in the first game, team A won against team B. And in the second game, team D won against team C. And in the third game, team E won against team F and in the fourth game team G won against team H so now we have our new set of players for the second round so for the fifth game we have team A versus team D since they are the winners from round one so they will now competing again for the round two let's say A won again and team D loses and for the sixth game we have Team E and Team G. Let's say Team E won against Team G. Now for the third round or the final round, we have Team A and Team E. Let's say Team E won against Team A. That means Team E is now our champion. Now let's look again to the computation we made lately. We can see that in diagram, there are three rounds made and it covers seven games. Now let's move to double elimination. In a double elimination tournament, a team or players must lose twice before they are eliminated. It's superior to the single elimination tournament when a small number of players are involved. When we say small number of players, that means less than eight for it makes allowances for players having an off day. The advantages of this kind of tournament are a team must be beaten twice to be eliminated and also it selects more adequate winner and it maintains player motivation right up until the end. And its disadvantages are it emphasizes elimination, bracket and times can vary widely depending on how the bracket plays out and more difficult to know when the event may conclude. The formula we will be using in this tournament is G is equal to N minus 1 times 2. So for us to understand easier, I will only use 16. So G is equal to N minus 1 times 2. So let's substitute. G is equal to N minus 1, that means G is equal to 6 minus 1 times 2. Then 6 minus 1 times 2 is equal to 10. So we have 10 games to be played. 
Now let's elaborate further the double elimination tournament using a diagram. I will explain how six teams in a double elimination bracket works. In this proportion, we have the winners, and here is the loser's bracket. All the teams start up here. So let's say we have Team Opol, Mulugan, El Salvador, Hitagum, Ikunan, and Bulwa. So the first match is match 1, Mulugan versus El Salvador. Then let's say Mulugan lose, so Mulugan is our L1 now because they lost in match 1. They don't get eliminated to the tournament, they still have the one chance to play. In match 2 is Hitagum and Ipunan. Let's say Hitagum loses, so Hitagum will be put in L2. Then El Salvador advances and Ipunan advances. And now we have match 3, the Opol versus El Salvador. Let's say El Salvador won and Opol loses. So we're gonna put Opol to L3. For match 4, Ipunan versus Bulwa. Let's say Ipunan won again and Bulwa loses. So we will put Bulwa in L4. So now for match 5, Hitagum lose and Opol advances. So Hitagum are out for tournament. In match 6, we have Mulugan versus Bulwa. Let's say Mulugan lose and Bulwa advances to the next match. Then here, Opol and Bulwa advances for the next round of loser's bracket. For the match 7, we have Ipunan and El Salvador. Let's say Ipunan loses. So Ipunan is not yet eliminated. We will put Ipunan to loser's bracket here in L7. And in match 8, let's say Opol loses and Bulwa won. So for match 9, we have Ipunan versus Bulwa. So let's say Bulwa lose and Ipunan win. So here, in match 10, we have El Salvador and Ipunan for the final round. This time, we will be knowing if who will be the champion. So that would be all for the double elimination tournament. Now let's proceed to the round robin. The round robin tournament and league schedules consist of all individuals or teams playing each entry an equal number of times. The winner of the tournament is generally the team or individual with the most wins. The advantages for this tournament are each team have the opportunity to play with the other teams and it produces a true champion and it is a popular format. The disadvantages are it's time-consuming, needs many facilities, and doesn't provide an instant winner. To assign teams in every games, we need the round-robin formula so that we will be knowing if how many games will be played by the eight teams. So the formula for the round-robin is G is equal to N times N minus 1 divided by 2. Here, we are going to substitute N with 8 since N stands for the number of teams or entries then times 8 minus 1 divided by 2. So 8 times 7 divided by 2 is equal to 56. Then 56 divided by 2 is equal to 28. So our number of games is 28. To assign teams of each games, we will use rotation method so that there will be no repetitions. Let's say the team 1 here remains fixed and the other team will rotate around in a counterclockwise direction. So the direction is going to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then here we have 1, then 8, since 8 is next 
to the one in this area. So one, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And continue the rotation to the next up until the last round. So we can see here in the table that there are seven rounds. And in seven rounds, there are 28 kings. The winner of this type of tournament is a team with more winnings in every game. And that would be all. Thank you and God bless.